Okay, so we represent the, I represent the affirmative side, and we believe that marijuana should not be listed as a Schedule One drug. I have a quote here written by Amy Nordrum, written on February 19, 2015. And it states that the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration lists marijuana in the most restrictive of the five classes that the agency uses to regulate dangerous drugs. Marijuana is classified as a Schedule One substance, which is the ranking reserved for drugs with the greatest potential for abuse and with no med medicinal value. Heroin, ecstasy, and LSD are listed in that category too, while cocaine and methamphetamine rank one level lower than marijuana as Schedule Two. And for my second allegation, I have a um, we believe that people suffer more from opioid abuse in states where medical marijuana is illegal. I have a quote, a quote here written by Richard Tate from Cliffside, Malibu, written on March 13, 2017. More than half the states in the nation and the District of Columbia have legalized the medical use of marijuana. Although the DEA has vowed not to change marijuana's status as an illegal substance on a national level, there is real reason to allow marijuana for medical use. In states where medical marijuana is legal, those with pain conditions will often choose marijuana over opi opioids, reducing the number of over overdose deaths in those states by 25%. Pharmaceutical companies have fought the use of medical marijuana, even though it clearly saves lives. In states with legal medical marijuana, fewer opioid prescriptions are written and filled, cutting into profits. The pharmaceutical companies are not beholden to patients, but to shareholders. Because of this, patients must be vocal advocates for their own health care needs. And this is an issue of structural inherency, inherency because it's an issue within the system that's already there and it's holding people back, basically. And for my third, our third quote states, we believe marijuana should be descheduled, not rescheduled. And I have a quote here from Christopher Teague written on May 21st, 2016 on the future of marijuana. What descheduling would do is remove cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act completely, relegating it the same status as alcohol and tobacco. This would allow states to control the substance entirely how they see fit and open up the nation to adult use without the pretext of medical need. Most cannabis enthusiasts want cannabis to be descheduled, as do most cannabis-related businesses. Descheduling would have all the benefits of access to scientific study and doctor prescription without the limits on production and distribution, unless put in place by a state. Putting cannabis into a category lower than Schedule I would mean the opening of the door to medical prescription, rather than just a recommendation. Doctors still cannot legally prescribe the medicine, and for states like Texas, where the law states that it must be prescribed, this means that medical cannabis is still unavailable, which would, which we don't really see a point in rescheduling, that's why we would rather deschedule. Um, and then I also have some additional evidence um, medical marijuana would have a great impact on tax revenue. And then this is from Mirna Lina Krishna of Investopedia, written on April 20th, 2017. Better than expected sales of medical marijuana in Colorado and Washington over the past year have resulted in buoyant tax revenues. In 2015, Colorado collected more than $135 million in taxes and fee on medical and recreational marijuana. Sales in the state totaled over 996 million. Sales in northern sales in the state totaled over 996 million, and sales in North America grew 30 percent to 6.7 billion in 2016, and is pro projected to increase to 20.1 billion by 2021, according to Arcview Market Research. And this isn't um, is a solvency uh, stock. The stock issue of solvency, because um, it's basically just laying out the like a way that we can solve our problems and make more money from it. Stand back up. Oh, Careful. I stand. I now stand up for cross examination. Perfect. Um, for the first argument. Um, you said it was Nordstrom as the? Nordrum. Nordstrom. N-O-R-D-R-U-M. And uh, do you know uh, like where it was from, the source? Um, it was from the International Business Times on, and from an article on why marijuana should be rescheduled. And then in your... Um, written as a Schedule 1 drug, not rescheduled, sorry. All right, and then in your third argument, um, it says that you want to put marijuana in the same level as tobacco and alcohol, right? Yeah. Okay. And then it says uh, something about scientific studies. Um, Can you go to that part?
I don't necessarily have something on scientific studies, but I have something on like um, what rescheduling would do and like why the why it would be a bad decision to reschedule and it makes it difficult and like unattainable for just regular people. Like you'd still need a prescription. Okay. And then also it says that um, in Col something on uh, your last one, the fourth argument, mm -hmm. it says uh, studies in Colorado. Uh -huh. um, is that a so? Are you saying that this is going to affect the federal level or just the state level? Um, well, it would affect both on the state level because they can do what they want with it, and obviously it would affect the federal government, whether they're more involved or less involved. Right. And then the last one, um, your whole uh, affirmative side is saying that we should uh, schedule or reschedule it from a Schedule 1 and R&D scheduling it. What are we doing? Scheduling it or rescheduling it? Uh, we should deschedule it completely, not even reschedule it. Okay. Because descheduling would allow it to be um, freely used and used by like any scientist. Uh, now we'll hear from the first negative.